Hi guys. So I've put together a little slideshow with what are really just images that I've collected over the years, what I call quiltable images. So there's no special time to do this. I'm always doing this. I've seen some really great things in parking lots, skies mostly like this one. They seem to happen a lot in the Safeway parking lot because we're rushing to get stuff for dinner or to put a few groceries in the camper while we're traveling. And so I just take a picture. Then there's on the road. My husband likes to be the driver. And so I just take pictures out the window. I've done it for years and years. I do it whether we're in Hawaii or whether we're just driving out to Spring Meadow Lake or over to Clancy or whatever. I've got shots that I've taken out the window of my house because there are a couple of places in the house where you get these kinds of skies. I haven't seen out this particular window in years because it's my husband's office now, but it used to be a kid's bedroom. And so I sat out the window every morning when it was time to get ready for school. In some of these shots, you can even see the window screens. This right here, I don't know what caused this. It's just crazy. This is off a little deck and the stairs that come up to the sewing room. In my mind, I just crop out my neighbor's roof or garage and put a mountain there instead or something like that. Whenever the view is special, I just take a picture and think maybe someday I'll put that in a quilt. I'm not sure where this one is. I've got shots that are around the house. I have a number of shots that have bicycles in them. I'm actually thinking of doing a series of quilts all with bicycles. My husband says that sounds boring because he just doesn't think that way where something sparks his imagination and immediately starts building itself in his head. If I showed him a finished quilt, I know he would like it. And he was trying to problem solve for me immediately. He was asking, how could you simplify a bike so that it would be easy? So I told him, you know, the bike being easy isn't really the point. But anyhow, I've got walks around the block, which is where a lot of these things that I've quilted over the years have come from. There's also, of course, camping, hiking, boating, all those sorts of things. It's on my to-do list to make a quilt of this really nice picture of my husband and a friend of ours coming back from a little spin around the lake at their cabin. These are the photos that I look through when I need inspiration to make something new. It turns out for this class, though, I did specifically go out to Spring Meadow Lake. I ended up going out three or four nights over the course of a week to get just the right picture, which I've named Reflection on Spring Meadow Lake. I wanted it to be doable, where people could make it more difficult if they wanted, but for someone who's never really made something with raw edge quilting of this size before, it would be manageable. So when I'm assessing a photo and I'm trying to judge whether or not it would make a good quilt, I'm looking at whether or not my mind is already translating each area into fabric. How would I do this? What technique would I use for this? What is in my skill set would that allow me that would allow me to create in fabric what I see in this picture? because you don't want to overextend yourself and end up with another UFO. And you know, you can always simplify as you go forward. And I recommend that you do so. If you find yourself feeling overwhelmed at some point, because you can take the bicycle you were going to put in there and turn it into a bucket or wheelbarrow or a bush or a bird bath, something that is simpler in terms of its shape. I always consider scaling back as a way to manage a project. But the plan in this course is to break this image down into fun quiltable areas or steps so we each end up with a wall quilt. I also wanted to show you how I did edit this image for us to use. You can do this in lots of ways on the computer, maybe even on your phone. You can crop it, which I did. You can colorize an image. Here I'm using color curves in a very old version of Photoshop Elements. Not the pricey pro version, but the inexpensive version. I'm using it to find and bump up the color in the sky, which brings up this pink line. I didn't draw this pink line. It's there. It's just so faint that you just can't see it until you bump up that part of the color spectrum. I thought it would be nice to have a bit more in the sky and also reflecting into the water for our class picture. So you can bring out a particular quality and you can do this with a program, but you can also just draw in there with colored pencil to change the sky and the water. You could also cut and paste 
paper to make what you want, you could cut out a mountain from one photo and put it in front of a very attractive, colorful sky from another photo. So I've put all the class photos in downloadable PDF form in the course materials, and there are several different versions to look through. You don't need to print them all out. It would take a lot of printer ink to do that. There's a black and white version. There's a version with a one inch grid in order to help keep sizes relative. These first two PDFs might be the most useful. And then I've got several other versions. One is the original picture. Even with a plain sky, Using varying thread colors and stitch patterns, you could add incredible beauty to a simple sky. And then there's the colorized version with the pink line, which could easily be orange or gold or even purple. I've also done a version where the photo is lightened so that you can see what's going on around the lake and to help you see the different shapes, even though we'll simplify that down. There are a couple other alternate versions from the same vantage point on different evenings. They're very different and in some cases much more complicated. And uh, I won't be breaking down that part, but I'm happy to talk with anyone and have sort of a back and forth about how I would approach that. Personally, I like to work from color photocopies, and these are some of mine. So you'll see them drift in and out of the picture as I'm doing things. I also wanted to mention that, of course, you can use your own photo. That's fine, but I'm happy to let you know my thoughts on whether or not a particular picture is going to be especially hard or to brainstorm ideas for techniques for different parts of your image. As you probably know, the more experienced you are, the better you are at free motion quilting, the more you've handled different types of quilts, the easier time you're going to have making this compared to someone who's relatively new to free motion quilting. We can compensate a little bit for someone that's more of a beginner at quilting, but we still want to do our best to make it so that you're going to be able to turn out with a quilt. For some reason, I just want to talk about something they do in movies, which is called shooting day for night. When for budgetary or other reasons, they can't actually shoot a night scene in the evening, they'll shoot it during the day. They'll do things with the camera settings and with how they face the actors, and by not shooting in the harshest part of the daylight with light directly on the actors, then in post, they'll process the film and tweak it in different ways. If you're like me, you're excited to hear about this because you've watched movies before where you were confused. Is this supposed to be daytime or nighttime? Because it just looked odd to you, but it totally makes sense. They were trying to make it look like night, but they didn't quite succeed that well by just changing the lighting of the film. So they shot it during the day. They wanted it to be night. Your eye didn't quite agree that it was night. And so you were just casting around while you were watching it, wondering, where are we? When are we? How long has it been? Is it nighttime? Is it still day? I've done that countless times in movies. Anyway, some of that day for night stuff is similar to what we can do with something like Photoshop or even just in our thoughts when we want understand that we're working with a daytime photo, but we're going to make a nighttime quilt. Anyway, day for night shooting. It's just fascinating. There are some activities for lesson one in the course materials. Please check those out and please start saving your own images if you aren't doing that already. This is one that I took at an art fair years ago. I've always wanted to make a quilt of it as a self-portrait. Thanks.